All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. I am here today. I'm very, very excited. Woo! <laughs> I am super excited today. I am talking to uh, Kyra Gell of, um, geez, uh, you know, King Hitter, um, Leadfoot, and of course, uh, Corrosion of Conformity fame. So thank you so much for joining me, Carl. This is uh, it, this is very exciting to be chatting with you today. Hey, man, thanks for having me. This is awesome. It's 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 a total pleasure. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, I mean, first off, big question: you know, How you been? How you been doing? I know you you had COVID recently. Are you doing okay? Are you feeling feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I think you know I might have a little <clears throat> I don't know latent cough or something here and there, but you know who the hell you know that might be from smoking weed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, you know, we, uh, yeah, I, I was vaccinated. Um, I just had a, a breakthrough case, like a lot of people are having. And, uh, you know, who, who wants to get into the science of it? But um, my, my version of it is that I was okay. I was out for about two weeks and it was kind of scary, weird thing just to have uh, yeah. that happen to you. It's like the flu, but not the flu. And I, I likened it to being like mildly demonically possessed. You know, I mean, you don't, <laughs> you know, there's weird shits going on in your body and you're not really sure. But as right. long as the vitals were okay, you know, blood pressure, pulse, all that, you know, breathing, it's like, I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to be okay. And uh, just lay back here and chill and get as, you know, be better as fast as I can. So Ooh. I'm fortunate. I have a very loving, supportive wife who, uh, uh, in the middle of a big promotion and all this new responsibility was dealing with my ass at the same time. And, oh. you know, I was just, I could, you know, I can't complain. There's a lot of people in way shittier positions. It was just the two of us here. So I made out like a band and I'm fine. Everything's cool. cool. And I uh, was able to do a show uh, this past Sunday and oh nice. it didn't, it, it didn't affect me at all vocally. I was, I was scared of that as a, you know, I still, I still sing, I still do my thing. And I was just in the back of my mind, I was terrified of, uh, it messing my lungs up to the point where I might not be able to do that. So yeah, definitely. Now was but, this uh, with uh, was this show with was this King Hitter or was this? Uh, no, I got a new band that I'm going to talk about. Oh, cool, brand new. So that's oh, this is cool. why this is so fortuitous. Excellent. No, no, yeah, no, I got a new thing. Uh, no, no, it's a it's, it's a new band, but we can get to that later if you want, or okay. I can launch into that. I don't want to. If you would, uh, I'm I'm excited to hear about. So that, I've, I've got a new band called Lie Heavy. Okay, that is. Um, Two other members of Leadfoot, uh, Graham Fry, who you may know from Confessor. Yeah. He was the original Confessor guitar player back in the day. Cool. One of the founding guys uh, back in the, the original heavy music scene in, in, the, in the early, in the 80s in uh, North Carolina. And was kind of, um, you know, they were on par, they were in the same, you know, group as COC back in the 80s. And they were like kind of uh, friends yet competitors, you know, and there was, gotcha. there was Confessor and there was Corrosion of Conformity. But uh, yeah, Graham came out of that and then uh, ended up, um, when I parted company with um, COC, uh, he joined me in Leadfoot and was on the first two Leadfoot albums, Okay, uh, bring it on and take a look. Um, and then, you know, back and forth lineup changes and stuff, but we, we you know, he came back to Leadfoot again later on. Uh, and then Leadfoot's still going, technically, we're, we're still just kind of going to be a forever band that plays whenever we play. But we decided to, uh, this is kind of Graham's, um, not solo project so much, but it's, it's, a, it's a mountain of riffs and, and songs that Graham has written. He's just an incredible uh, guy with, with, with that. And uh, he was like, hey, do you want to lay some vocals on this? And it's kind of evolved. And we pulled in some other people. And uh, one of them was the bassist, TR, oh, okay. uh, from, from Leadfoot. And then also um, this amazing drummer, JD, Jeff Dennis from... Um, most famously from the backsliders, kind of an alt country Americana thing, but he, he used to play in heavy, heavy bands like the point back in the day. And I don't know, I'm rambling on, but it's really, it's, it's, oh, that's it's really cool. good. That's exciting. Kind of stoked. So, so is there, the sorry, is there an album in the works or? Yes, there's an album. We have about 17 songs, I think written. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I have some demo stuff. I'll be glad to send your way and you can. Very cool. Check out uh, and um, you know, it's a work in progress. So it was just kind of this COVID jam going on behind the scenes, you know, like we were just getting together best we could and not, or not able to get together and then get together. And then not right. get together. But uh, we're just coming out of this and, and booking some shows and having some fun. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Very yeah. Nice. No, I'm taking, I mean, I'm taking it. It's, I'm taking it very seriously. It's, it's uh, I can do my best to actually put this out there for everybody to hear. So 
Right. Um, That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and is, is King Hitter still going or st you're still working kinda, on that? Not, not kind of sort of not really. I, I it just, we had some, I don't want to get into anything uh, hmm. so much as uh, we had some lineup <clears throat> issues and some personnel things and um, changed rhythm sections from the original one. And um, that's some just, I don't know, personal issues and, and uh, you know, it wasn't for lack of good songs and, and, and songwriting and, and uh, the abilities of people to play. And, you know, Scott's my brother, you know, from Leadfoot and, and from King Hitter and also from COC Blind doing the stuff with Reed. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's just, we may get back to that. I'm not sure. But right now, it's just the opportunity I have is, is this current thing, Lie Heavy. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's that life, you know, it's hard to keep any of it on the rails sometimes. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think dealing... that, that's the thing. I think sometimes we as fans forget that and maybe not so much forget, but maybe don't want to acknowledge is that, you know, I mean, it's a business and, you know, like any business, we all work in business, you know, where yeah, you don't work with the same people forever. Um, things change things, you know, and there's, there's personality clashes and it doesn't mean you hate the person, but it's like, well, I don't yeah. work well with this person. I need to do something different. I yeah, think, I, yeah, people, yeah, yeah, exactly. If people evolve. It's, it's also like kind of like a marriage, right? Or a family, you know, like you, you know, like you love your brother, but sometimes you want to, you know, strangle your brother and <laughs> not talk to him for a while, you know, yeah. not specifically, but you know what I mean? I just, it's like a marriage. You try to make things work. There's a group dynamic. Um, I'm not disparaging anybody. I, I, I've been fortunate to uh, work and uh, work with these. And I mean, obviously write and play with um, super, super talented people, um, you know, and I, I can't say really anything bad. It's just that, you know, it's just it, nothing lasts forever. Sometimes you just uh, right. do your best. And then there's real life, you know, plays into it. People have to, you know, all this rock and roll doesn't always pay the bills. Almost never actually, it, you know, and um, you got to do your thing and, and hold, hold, hold your family life down and hold your work life down and, you know, either cover the rent or the mortgage and, Right. put gas in the tank or whatever it is, you know, yeah. a beer in your belly, you know, whatever. <laughs> hey. But, uh, you know, so I, I just, I, I never say never to doing like, like I'll never say like, Oh, I'd never do a King hitter record again, or I'd never do this. Or, you know, just right now where I'm at is I'm, I'm doing this thing with my heavy, but, uh, Leadfoot still, um, exists and, um, you know, that's all I, I can say. Just you know, there's I got my fingers in a couple of things. So yeah, and there's always there's there's always there's some other people reaching out for cool projects as well, and and um, some cross pollinating going on there with um, uh, really cool folks in different bands across the world that have reached out and want to do some things. So I'm open to anything, really. So. Cool. cool. Uh, let me um, turn my phone off. Oh, the uh, I was going to ask you. So with Lie Heavy, is this um, in a similar vein as kind of previous work that you've done or, or it's, kind of what's the yeah. direction of the of the band yeah it's 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 a uh, kind of i'd say i don't know what's the word proto metal you know it's more like a uh, steeped in kind of deep purple black sabbath uh yeah. alice cooper uh mountain grand funk maybe but also it's got some it's got it's definitely got some doom it's got a little bit of punk in it too you know it's just Nice. Like Leadfoot was always a swirl of influences and things, and I think even COC to some extent. Well, at least at least my during my tenure, I can't yeah. say it for the rest. I can only speak for the Blind Record and stuff around that. But you know, I, I've always felt like I don't have one emotion. I don't have one way of presenting myself. And I always, to me, the greatest bands <clears throat> in the past they didn't necessarily just get one guitar sound and and, and leave the mix the same. Right, you know, they had different. <laughs> You know, you look at band, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a, uh, putting myself on the same level, say the Zeppelin or Deep Purple or something or Stones, but, you know, you, you love these bands, or I do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like there was just so many different approaches and ideas and things. And it's just, it was, they were allowed to be creative and, and it didn't disappoint anybody. It was just that band doing that song, you know? So, and so sometimes people say, you're a little bit all over the place, but I'm like, hey, I, Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad, sometimes, you know, like, like anything else. So this is just my thing. And I, that's not ragging on any bands that have kind of their sound and their thing only. But for me, it's like, I, I, I want to always like it to be a little bit open-ended. 
So, yeah. but it, it so I'm, I see I'm rambling, but no, 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 it, it's, I, it's, I agree. I, so I think, it, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing that I've always loved about your, your vocals is it, it there's obvious influence. I mean, it's definitely Carl. It's, you know, it's definitely you, but there's, there's a lot of different influence and it's, it's the full gamut. It's great. I love it because there's, yeah, there's Southern rock. There's yeah. The English pop rock uh, of the sixties and seventies. There's oh, yeah. hardcore punk, there's metal, doom metal. It's great. Like you have a huge range and it's obvious not just in your voice, but in your songwriting and, you know, kind of what you, all these things that you've pulled in to create who you are as a musician. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's great. Well, I appreciate it, man. I just, I don't, all I remember is being a kid, you know, and, you know, this is my age, but a, a kid in the seventies and whether it was a record that was given to me or played for me, or I went and bought it myself when I was old enough to go do that, uh, which was at a pretty young age, you know, I remember buying um, a Sex Pistols record and then also buying a Judas Priest record. You know what I mean? Like, and then also buying a Blondie album and also my sister gave me a Clash album and then also my other sister gave me a Zeppelin album. And, and me, you know, just like, just like, I love all of this. I just, this just makes sense to me, you know? And I, when I moved, I, in, in 1981, I moved from, um, I ended up in Connecticut. Um, I moved from Hong Kong to Connecticut. Wow. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a change. crazy childhood. You know, I was born in Montreal, Canada to Swedish parents, went back to Sweden. Then we moved to Hong Kong from, I was there from 71 to 81. And then wow, ended up in Connecticut. My mother got remarried and then was, ended up because of that, randomly be becoming immersed in the Connecticut hardcore scene. This amazing, uh, really cool punk scene that was a sister or brother or sibling scene to the New York City hardcore scene and the Jersey scene. Okay. kind of the tri-state area there. And I had the good fortune of being able to go to what was called the Anthrax Gallery in Stanford, Connecticut, and seeing five bands every Friday night and five bands every Saturday night, and then being able to go see a CB's matinee or a Rock Hotel show or a Ritz show or all through the early 80s and through the 80s. <clears throat> so we were, I was just in, joyfully immersed in this <clears throat> and encouraged by my peers in, in the scene in Connecticut just to, hey, you want to join a band? Do you want to sing? You know, I'd always <clears throat> screwed around, but then somebody was like, get on stage. Anybody can do it, you know? And that's what happened. And this, all that shit just ended up swirling and going and was awesome. That's, that's when I met first met COC playing there in 1984. I saw them. Wow. And then my band Seizure, my punk rock band opened up for them in 85. Uh, and we had a pen pal relationship with, you know, I did with Reed and he had my EP and, you know, this, these relationships, they were really awesome. The old underground scene there, people met each other and stayed in contact. This is all pre-internet, pre-email, pre-Twitter, yeah. you know, pre-everything, you know. Yeah. You had to, when people you had used to, to write letters or make phone calls. <laughs> yeah. You had, to do, you had to work for it. <laughs> you know, but, you know, the, but that, that, that all, you know, I'm going off on a tangent, but it, but it all, you know, comes together from, from, um, uh, just being kind of thrown into this swirly mass of, of surrounded by great talent and sometimes not great talent, but people just with a lot of intent willing to take chances and take some influences they came up with and just throw it against the wall and see what's would stick and yeah. just go for it or whatever, you know, take it, you know. Well, and it sounds time. like, you know, you had some influence from your, your sisters, you know, buying you albums and two, did two you older sisters for sure. Yeah. Uh, did you come from a, I mean, not just being music lovers, but did you come from a musical family? Was there, were there musicians you know, in your family? Yeah. My, my one sister, Anna played a lot of guitar, but more like kind of coffee house kind of stuff, but she was uh, an influence in the other. Um, everybody was just really into music, you know? And yes, there are some people in my, uh, like further back, you know, like great, great grandparents and, you know, People like that, there were, you know, musical, actually musicians, but it was kind of scattered throughout, but it was a family of artists. On my mother's side, it's a lot of painters and uh, um, and and people steeped in that, you know, and steeped in the arts. And, and uh, nice. so that, that was always that kind of tradition of, of free expression and, and going for it and being creative, most of all. Being creative was always encouraged, what, whatever that meant, whether it's writing or painting or, you know. I used to play saxophone and harmonica, you know, oh, nice. and then, and then, um, you know, ultimately singing, you know, so my mom was always, 
she'd come to all the shows. She'd seen me play at CB's and the Continental. And, oh, that's great. You know, and, and, and at, you know, Pub Anchor in Stockholm and, you know, like showing up and uh, my sister, and my mom would came out and saw uh, COC open up for Rollins Band in Providence. Oh, wow. you know, like, no. So no, there's always this, I've been very fortunate. I've always had that kind of um, encouragement, you know. That's good. So, like, that's important yeah, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's funny. It's interesting how, how that can shape you as a musician. I mean, there's, there's either the people rebelling against their family or the people that have the influence, you know, have the, the, the support from their family to be a sure. musician. Um, yeah. It's interesting how that, and I don't know what that means exactly, but it's, it's interesting, no, we, where, you know, how that can be different that, for different people. Well, that's all where it starts, right? I mean, that's who you are. That's where you come from. So that's where, you know, it either starts or stops there, you know, <clears throat> whether it's a rejection or, or an embrace, you know, or something in between, you know, we all have our, our family stories. And then uh, w whether we uh, carried on uh, with their support or in spite of them, you know, so right. I'm just, I happen to be lucky on that side, you know, um, yeah. you know, but um, I guess not everybody has the same thing, but it definitely shaped me. And, you know, I might be rambling, like I said, all too much about that. No, no. But, um, no I'm, I'm just excited that I, at my age, you know, like uh, still doing this, that I, I, there's still people that give a shit and want to hear it. And, um, you know, that there's still something left to do and rather than just kind of giving up and fuck it, I'm just going to go to my day job and shut the door on music. I, I think it's for, for us, I'm sure for you and for hopefully the people watching or listening or whatever, um, it's our lifeblood. It's our, for me, it's my religion. You know, it's my church. Yeah. You know, that's what makes me feel whole and connected to the universe. So whatever that form, that expression takes it, you know, good or bad, or people like it or don't, as long as I get to do it on some level, it's, it's the best thing I know. You know, that's when I walk away from it for any greater amount of time, I'm miserable. Right. So, you know, and I, and I feel like this something not there, not right. So <clears throat> right now it's, it's awesome. There's a lot going on and, yeah, Hopefully cool. I can uh, get some, some people to uh, pay attention and, you know, and, and, you know, all that show up. <laughs> cool. Cool. The um, I, I was curious, you know, you mentioned, I mean, you've lived in a lot of, you know, multiple places, you know, Canada, um, Sweden, Hong Kong, you're in the South now, you're in Connecticut. Do you feel that those, did you, any of the, any of those places, any kind of that culture, did that influence the way you write or the way you sing, like music, in in in, in any terms? Were there what kind of cultural impacts for you well, from those <clears throat> places? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, just to jump right in, I I um, you know, I lived a lot of places, and I realized coming up that there's just two types of people in the world: cool people and assholes. So, <laughs> you know, like it's it's kind of universal, right? You know, it just you can. Whether it's some Chinese guy who's being a redneck asshole or a Swedish guy who's being a red, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. It's yeah. somebody being a jerk off, you know, you know what I mean by that. Or or somebody who's being really cool. It's just, it's it's but I had the good fortune of being around the world and uh, not to sound hokey, but you know, kind of buying into the whole community as you know, one planet. And yeah. it definitely shaped my view and definitely shaped my view as coming into the punk rock scene, you know, where I was uh uh, big on understanding my place in the world and our place in history. And um, I think that came into my lyrics that might be obvious kind of on the, on the blind lyrics and, and maybe yeah. some other lyrics if you've read them. Um, less known stuff like King Hitter and Let Put. You know, there's also some silly stuff too, but that's that's okay. But um, so it definitely had an influence on me is, is being able to, uh, you know, put me in a place where I felt I, I, had, I could see see things for what they were. I'm not saying I, I, I'm speaking the truth, but I try, I try to tell some version of it, you know, of it. So, well, that was one thing I was, have always really respected about your songwriting, your lyrics specifically is, uh, you know, whether it's COC or, or, or the bands later is yeah, you don't, you're a very honest songwriter. I mean, and there's lots of honest songwriting, but you don't hold back. Like, and you have some pretty socio-political lyrics and there's no apologies, which I have a great respect for. They're, you're not apologetic about it. It's like, you know, like if you're a racist, fuck you. You know, it's, yep. you, you kind of have this very, you know, which I, I love it. I think it's great. I, that kind of honesty yeah. is important. And uh, and especially now, I think oh, yeah. more so maybe than it was then. 
you know, in, in the early nineties and, 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 you know, at least with, you know, with COC, I think at that time it was very important, but now it's, I mean, I think it's, it's, it speaks volumes to, to the... I think, yeah, well, it's, you know, I, I think the little, you know, young punk rock Carl would look and say, Hey, wow, everything you were yelling about back then, you were, you weren't completely like lost and full of shit or just trying to get attention. It was like, it all played out. But yeah. it's actually going on and it's worse. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. what you said it was, you know, not that we knew it all, but, you know, I think we were onto something in that scene and we're the whole speaking truth to power and, and questioning authority and, you know, it, but it's hard to get older and then, I don't know if you sell out, but you're part of things, you're part of the system going to the grocery store and put right. that gas in your tank and doing that, you know, all that stuff and you, you, you're, you're steeped in it because that's how you get by and that's how you survive. But, you know, it's important to, keep things in perspective and um you're certainly right it's 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 not getting any better um but i'm like i mentioned before i'm a big history guy or maybe i said that and if you look back things were pretty bad back in the day and things are pretty good now also so sure, sure. The, the, the 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 earth has always been you know in chaos and there's always been the mighty that ruled over the weak and divided and conquered and it's just it's just up to us to you give a shit if, if, if it's your thing it, to, to speak up and try to make things better yeah you know i agree if, you know so the more of us doing better the better it is for everybody and it's just easier and there you go yeah but it sounds so simple but you know no i, think I know i know everybody's got a different story i'm not trying to preach i just uh for me it works i just try to look at things as i see them and then just uh, blurt it out hopefully with a good rhyme and a decent melody cool. yeah <laughs> definitely you definitely do that um, let's kind of circle back a little bit. You, you mentioned, uh, you know, what is what 84, 85, when, uh, you first came into contact with COC and started your, your, your band was playing with them. And then you, mm -hmm. you know, did a, you know, um, became pen pals. You started, you know, chatting back and forth at what point, uh, so you joined the band in 89, if I Correct. remember correctly. Yeah. So how did that come about? Where did, did, you know, did you have to try out? I mean, you had obviously were friends yeah. with them. You knew them, um, kind of what was the, what was the story well, as far well, as you becoming a member? Well, we were like, you know, acquaintances in that scene. We were like, you know, like, like, it wasn't like, like I was on the phone with Reed a bunch at all. I would, that would be uh, wrong to say that, but we had contact and there was kind of that greater tr uh, trust engendered by people in that scene. Like, oh, you know, another band, you know, we always do try to do right by each other. So it's like people would kind of take the call or answer the letter, that kind of thing. But no, I actually saw, I was in a band called School of Violence that actually released one album called We the People on Death Metal Blade. That was after Seizure, but before COC. Okay. And that was one year I was in that band in New York City. And, uh, I think when that album came out, We the People, for whatever reason, I, I quit the band pretty much right when it came out and ended up in another kind of band, more of a rock and roll band for four months, really didn't have a name. But during that time, the bassist in that band, I, uh, a friend of his down in, in Richmond said, hey, she backed up something I saw in the, in the Village Voice back when there was, you'd look in a newspaper and read the classifieds. Right. So the Village Voice in New York had a classified. I was like, oh. Corrosion of conformity, singer wanted, looking for, um, oh, here's my doggie. Hey, Penny. Um, look, uh, looking for a cross between HR from the Bad Brains, Ian Gillen, and Alice Cooper. Or, and then another one was like HR, Ian Gillen, uh, James Hetfield, and forget who else they were asking for. But it was just like, I love all those bands. <laughs> I'm into all that shit. Sure. You know, it's like, and then I, I talked to my friend DN. Then a Richmond who knew Reed very well and, and then also knew my bassist of that band I was in and said, hey, is this for real? Because this seems crazy. Like, and, and she's like, yeah, it's for real. She checked into it for me, got back to me and um, got on the phone and uh, exchanged information and then Reed and the band manager at the time, Karen Mason, Reed's girlfriend, Beth, they all came up and met me up in New York City. And uh, we hung out, hit it off. And then I, they had sent me uh, demos they had done. One of the songs was the one written by Phil Swisher, primarily, called Buried, which is on Blind. Oh, yeah. Great. And it was just a demo version with no vocals. And I remember listening to that over and over again, being really into that. And and the other songs, too, but really that one. And I woke up, 
I literally woke up and had the lyrics and the vocal melody oh, one cool. morning. And I just was like, okay. And I came down, uh, did the audition, and um, pretty much got the job on the spot, man. It was a really good audition down in Raleigh. And, nice. Um, you know, there's a version of that that's actually coming out on the 30th anniversary release. Oh. I think they're releasing that version, um, the demo version of that. Oh, cool. A period, and a couple other things. There's like a four album set coming out. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, November 5th is the 30th anniversary of Blind. So CFC's current label is re re reissuing it. That's very cool. That's very cool. And also freaky that that album's 30 years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it kind of blows my mind. So, yeah. I, I was no, talking no. to somebody else about this recently. Just, yeah, like these, these albums where it's like all the, like, holy shit, this album, it came out how long ago? How old yeah. am I? Really? Exactly. I can't, it can't be that old. I, yeah, I swear it was my, a few... my, my, I'm going to put my readers on and get my walker <laughs> yeah. and go over and see if I'm <laughs> Right. Right. What was the, um, well, I, I was going to ask you about what the writing process was for Blind. Um, so obviously, you know, so Phil wrote wrote that song and you, you, you know, like, like you said, well, yeah, you kind of came up with their lyrics very quickly. Was the rest of it kind of a collaborative effort? Had they already? It was, yeah, it was collaborative. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was. I mean, it was just kind of like us, we were practiced like insane amount at that time in our, you know, early 20s just going Ape shit <laughs> in a practice space, just going, just hammering this stuff out. Uh, nothing but focus on that. That was my only job, <laughs> you know. And I was just, we would just focus, focus, focus. And and uh, the riffs would come out. And I remember this whiteboard with this huge kind of flow chart of like parts mm -hmm. and writing it out and organizing. I was like, it was, it was actually, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty organized actually it seemed like for, for what it was i mean there was obviously stuff organically would come out right. come out but and people present ideas but no it was a, it was a cool co collaboration we were just young and on fire and excited and we wanted to do we all loved a lot of different stuff i could i think i speak for everybody in the band yeah uh, even now um everybody wanted you know we you know love black sabbath but we love black flag we loved yeah the bad rains and but we loved you know Deep Purple or, you know, I keep coming back to that kind of thing, but those are like obvious things, kind of like we love the old Alice Cooper band, but we also, you know, you know, love the Descendants or something, you know, like it was just like whatever, you know, like it doesn't, and it didn't have to just be, that's just extreme, but we just kind of mushed a lot of ideas together and said, hey, is this going to work? Is this going to work? You know, we just said, let's try to do something a little bit bigger than this, that, and uh, I don't know, you just, it just happens. It was just create a process and yeah. Uh, well, and then also ten weeks recording that album in at Baby Monster, in New York City, which <laughs> was not always insanely easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Did yeah. did you when you were recording the album? Did you have a sense? I mean, you know, I know you guys were you were young men, but did you have a sense at the time of kind of how revolutionary what you were doing was and how? You know, I mean, like you mentioned, you know, you're you're pulling all this different, all these different bands and all this different influence in. But did you have a sense of the time? You know, it's easy now, you know, hindsight looking back at that album and going, "Wow, that was a really revolutionary album in terms of sound." I mean, there was a lot going on there, and especially for 1991, nobody sounded like that at all. Well, that yeah, well, thanks. Uh, yeah, we we were trying to do something I think bigger than what was just kind of going on around us. We were trying to like say, hey, let's marry all these influences and really work at creating good sounds. Uh, John Custer at the time, it was his first album he had produced. We brought him in. Um, first thing of any like stature kind of and uh, brought him in and he was a big fan of layering guitars and creating these chords with like, he was a big Brian May queen freak and, hmm. um, we went in there, it was a 24 track studer machine analog with a beautiful Neve console, you know, this old school studio set up and just worked on getting the sounds. This is all pre-digital, you know, so all hands on deck for a mix. We literally had every person in the band like working a fader or something to make a mix come through, you know, on these insane sessions over a 10 week period, which almost killed us at one point and just going around the clock, just trying to appease the record company and also get things done. But <laughs> Um, no, it was, it was, we felt like we were onto something like we, 
you know, and then it came out and it got some attention at the time and just, you know, not, you know, does some, some markets it did better than others. If you want to talk about that and other people just right. didn't quite get it. And then yeah. like anything else, it's sits around for a while and people go, Hey, this is actually pretty good. You know? yeah. And by that time I was out of the band. So, right. And, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a pretty phenomenal album. I was listening to it uh, just the other day and the, it's amazing how much, I mean, one thing that I like about it, it, it flows really well, but, and you can tell there's lots of different influence, but it, it doesn't sound forced in any way. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, you've got Southern rock in there. There's, I, I'd even say there's kind of a Seattle influence. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but you know, kind of the Seattle sound at that time, the quote unquote grunge sound there, there even seems to be a little bit of that. Maybe it's just because of the punk influence. Um, but yeah. it's, it's, it's a pretty phenomenal album. I mean, just like, you know, I, I don't know, there, especially at that time, like no, nobody sounded like that. It, it's, it's really incredible what you guys were able to produce, I think, you know, um, well, and the cool thing is you continued to create this, you know, the sound yourself and, 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 you know, with, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what, how to describe the sound that you have as a vocalist, but yeah, like we, you know, like we've talked where you've combined all you know, like these multiple facets. Um, I think it's pretty incredible. Like it's just jazz, it's just, <laughs> yeah, jazz. just jazz, man. It's just jazz, jazz man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's and scatting my way to Daryl. You know? <laughs> no, it's just, yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to describe these things sometimes when you do them, if, if, if it's, like incredibly thought out or if you're just kind of pulling it out of your ass at the time, right. or you know you know if you're just kind of going for it uh, I, it's it's always harder to, to get into one's own creative process and say that there's any real method i don't know that i necessarily personally have some kind of you know carl Gell's foolproof method for you know doing this right. you know do one two and three and then uh, you know i just i i'm just fortunate the thing i do is i've always been lucky enough to surround myself with really competent um musicians that um hopefully you know are generally in the same vein and and then you know they inspire me to do things so you know i i, I feed off of the guitars you know and, and the, the 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 this the raw power of, of, of the band and yeah. that that inspires me you know and, and sometimes i'll walk around with an idea and lyrics that are stew for a long long time and that they're sitting there looking for a vehicle and then sometimes the the this locomotive goes steaming by and i go hey i want to jump on that and that's the band and i i joined that and that just happens you know but um no it's we were we were all lucky and it, like you mentioned the, the um uh seattle sound i mean in 1990 before there again was a blind and i was just literally singing existing coc songs uh and maybe we'd inserted one or two new ones i can't remember exactly we went out on a tour with Soundgarden and Danzig on oh. Ladder Than Love and Lucifuge 2 with us opening up for from L.A. to Boston for six weeks. And that didn't suck. Yeah. So, yeah, we were around some really great bands that, you know, but we'd all come out of the same scene. Like, you know, I saw Sam Haynes first show, you know, was, we were all friendly with those guys. Like Glenn was super nice to us. And uh, at the same time, we had our feet in the same you know, like we were huge fans of the same stuff that the CO, uh, the Seattle guys were, you know, and cool. fast friends with all of them, you know, Allison Chains too. And, uh, you know, the, that, that whole group of bands out there, like, you know, Mud Honey and Screaming Trees and ultimately, I guess, Nirvana and all that. I can't say I was personally close to them, but I'm just saying like Soundgarden especially, but cool. um, no, it was just, it was just all kind of uh, coming out of the same place, I think, Yeah, you know. Nice. And then, uh, so I guess it was 93, 94, you and Phil left CSS, Yes, right? I, I was, I, I was fired. Oh. So, no, I was, I, you know, I don't want to pretend I was, you know, whatever. I don't want to, anytime I talk about it, it just comes off as sour grapes. So I'm not going to do that, really. I just, uh, there's a version of me singing the Deliverance album. I was there for five weeks, and then it I uh, was deemed not to be part of that. And then Phil f felt that was not fair. I, I bailed, and for about nine months, uh, Phil and Woody Woodrow Weatherman was in the first version of Leadfoot called Loose Cannon. Oh, okay. And 
so named because they basically told me I was a dangerous, unapproachable alcoholic or something. I don't know why I was, you know, there's all the different reasons, but there was these rumors going around and I was there. there it wasn't fun. It was like a shitty, shitty divorce. Yeah. But uh, we had this thing going on and Woody decided he had to go back to CSC, which is fine. I, I got it. That was his baby. And Phil and I broke off and Loose Cannon ultimately became Leadfoot and uh, Graham Fry came on board and uh, Ryan ultimately uh, for the first album. And then we switched up and did lineup changes and all that. But we did three albums that I'm all I'm really proud of. You know, some yeah. of the productions better on the ones with more money. <laughs> you know, like Bring It On is a really good sounding record. We spent a lot of cash on that. That was a big Roadrunner uh, budget back in 96. And then uh, take a look on 13 times less the money. Right. And I remember in, in 99, but I'm still really proud of the content. I'd love to remix that album. And then uh, We Drink For Free, which nobody really knows about because that was just um, released on abstract records. And uh, literally came out with, they released it, but they had a mastering problem. There's like 16 errors on the, on, the tra on the album and nobody checked it before it went out. And so the CDs had to be recalled, you know? So I was like, pretty much, you know, it was like, wow, awesome. Wow. <laughs> so that killed us. That, that didn't help, but <clears throat> that's life. That's rock and roll, man. Do you, you know. do you have any plans of re-releasing that at some day? You know, at some point. I'd love to. I'd love to. It's just you know, it's like anything else. You just I've got a lot of plans, a lot of ideas. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's like making that shit happen. It's sometimes, yeah. you know, you know, like there's you know, plus you're living your regular life, going to your job and doing your thing. You know, so yeah, I would love to honestly if I could take the time and just organize my shit and say, hey, that would be awesome to 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 put that out. I don't know how many people would be super interested, but it'd be fun to kind of maybe uh, do a, um, a, a release that has maybe uh, some of my stuff through the ages and put it all in one place, you know? That would be very- If nothing cool. else, that might be easier, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that would be amazing, like some sort of box set, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool. I would like to do that, you know, forever. You might be into it. I, I'd be into it, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, but the, you know, I'm, I'm stoked to be doing stuff now. And like I said, excuse me, the, the new band Lie Heavy is, I'm really proud of it. It's really, and people tell me that I'm singing better than I actually ever have in my whole life, which is a pretty cool thing to hear at the tender age of 55. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's cool. That's very yeah. cool. Just, I'm a mere lad. I am mere lad. <laughs> Just you... getting to start. Just getting started. <laughs> Do you, Give me a uh... chance. Give me a chance. <laughs> Are there, uh, are there, do you guys have uh, shows lined up? You got stuff coming up here soon? Yeah, we kind of do. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're, we're really, um, yeah, we have a couple little gigs uh, just in the state coming up. Um, so, but we are working, our biggest push right now is to refine the material we have, finish the outstanding material as in stuff that's not completely finished yet. And um, literally, uh, I think I mentioned to you earlier uh, before, the tape officially started rolling or whatever the video was, uh, I think we've got about 17 songs. So that's a lot. And we're going to nail down the ones that we want to put onto a record. And, and uh, these guys are all real, like total musos, like total, like gearhead in a good way. Like, and that can be totally infuriating to me too. Sometimes the punk rock side of me is like, fuck that. Just, just play. <laughs> but no, but the other side of me is like, no, there's people that are really know their instruments, really know their craft, really, into good songwriting and most of all an attention to detail in terms of production and what makes the albums we love from the past really vital and important to us and and being able to hear through that and say you know the reason that a glenn john's recording was awesome is because the way the drums have this kind of the room presence and or whatever you know or martin birch or you know you start going down that that you know thing of where we you know there's a language that's spoken there so it's it for us. It's not just about going in and slapping it out in any which way. It's uh, though that can be okay too. But uh, just taking a making effort to really get the best sounds that represent how we want our instruments to sound or, or their instruments as and uh, cohesively, cool. you know. And that's so that's what we're working on now. Blah blah blah. Do you have <laughs> yeah. a, no, that's that's great. Do you have a target date for the album at this? Well, point? Well, as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, soon, sooner rather than later, I'd say. I, we'd love to have something out early next year. I think that's reasonable, you know? 
I think that's, I know that's attainable. Nice. So. Yeah. Very cool. That'd be great. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited to hear this. I, a first, a first quarter release now, maybe yeah. a second. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Um, well, I don't want to keep you all night, uh, but I do have uh, one last question oh. for you. So uh, with my, with my, with my blog, Brews and Tunes, I pair heavy metal, mostly heavy metal and hard rock albums, sometimes punk as well, but uh, sure. so I pair albums with craft beer. Uh, so it's a, Saturday evening, Carl's hanging out at home. What uh, what beer have you cracked open, and what album are you spinning right now? Oh, okay. Oh, so you're saying if not actually like, this second, yeah, like a, yeah. hypothetically, no, man, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, it's still summer. Um, drinking local. Uh, maybe cracked a paycheck pilsner, which is a good summer drink. Nice. Local Durham beer, Durham, North Carolina. Cool. And I don't know what I'm listening to. What am I listening to, man? What am I cranking? Is it old or new? I don't know. Whatever um, you want. Whatever you want. Whatever I want. Uh-oh. Jesus Christ, too many choices. Uh, <laughs> what will the people think? I'm freaking a paycheck Pilsner too. I don't know, man. I was just going to turn on some Roxy music. <laughs> but, Fuck, but there yeah. you go, right there. Roxy music, great band. Yeah, maybe I'm cranking, uh, maybe I'm cranking Love is the Drug, man. I love or Roxy it. music, some old school drinking a paycheck pills. Or, I don't know. I love it all, man. Heavy, soft, fast, slow. I don't know. If it's got intent, rock and roll, man. Bottoms up. Yeah, very <laughs> cool. know? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, my brother. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Everybody. Yeah, that one's great. Well, thank you so much, Carl. It was a joy chatting with you tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, have a great evening. Thank you so much for chatting with me. This was very cool. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.